everybody, Ronaldo Hoffman here of Gear It First, and I'm back to do video tutorials, video reviews, uh, industry news, etc., etc., etc. Obviously, I took a little bit of a break during COVID, uh, not just because COVID was really kicking my butt, as it did for all of us, but I just wanted to focus on other things. Meanwhile, but now I'm back, got some great new videos coming out for Gear It First. Really excited to show you some of the stuff that's coming out. But today I kind of want to talk to you about a topic that's been beat up multiple times again and again and again and again. I know I'm talking a little fast, I promise I'll slow down. Uh, and that's really about choosing the right pair of speakers. Now here is why I am redoing or doing this video. It keeps getting asked in every single forum. Oh, what's the right pair of speakers? I need an affordable pair of speakers and all that. I'm going to do something that I haven't really done before. I'm actually going to give you brands. So usually I just kind of tell you which way to go. Now I'm going to specifically give you brands of what I use that I know will work and so forth. Let's first talk about what to look for in an affordable pair of speakers. Affordable can be subjective, right? So for example, affordable usually means something you can afford. But how many times are you willing to afford that? Now what I mean by that is you buy a cheap pair of speakers, they don't work at an event properly, or they don't give you the sound and output that you expected for one of these reasons that I'll cover in just a second. And now you got to refund your client back. So not only did you spend 500 bucks on a crappy pair of speakers, but now you refunded, let's say another $800 to a client. Suddenly it costs you 1300 bucks. You might as well just about the right pair of speakers to begin with. Now, another solution is, well, you can buy used. And right now in the middle of COVID, this is a great time, honestly, to buy speakers because some people are just getting out of the business. Some people were ready to retire. And this was kind of like, well, you know, thing to do, or the kind of, you know, the last straw that broke the camel's back, whatever. Anyways, uh, but obviously when you buy used, it's kind of like buying a truck. You don't know how many truck pulls it's been at. Well, you know how many times that speaker has been tortured, abused, etc., etc. First thing to look out for, forget price. We'll worry about price in a minute, is in car audio, we have a saying. If the amplifier has the number of watts listed on the amplifier itself, it's garbage. I'm serious. If you go to Walmart, go look at car audio amps. Oh, 1,000 watts, 300 amps, 500 watts. No, 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 no. Those are all crap. Not that they don't put a lot of power. It's, just, it's crap. Now, if you look at actual amps, whether it's Orion, Kicker, uh, Boston Acoustics, Boswick, you know, uh, Elemental Designs, any of those bigger amps out there too, even some of the newer rock for Foscates, right? They don't have the wattage listed on the amplifier itself. Can't forget JBL. They give you model numbers. It could be like 1,001, which usually tells you 1,000 watts RMS at uh, one ohm stable. But in the DJ business, wattage doesn't matter. Car is a different story, and I'll be happy to do a video on that later on. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. But with speakers, it doesn't matter. Why? Because wattage is not a measurement of brightness. Now, I've done a video on this before, boop, in the link uh, as to why, but in short, long story short, wattage is a measurement of how much power it's using and it's outputting, but it's not a measurement of loudness. If I said brightness is the same thing for LEDs, it's not a measurement of brightness either. It's not a measurement of that output. Output power doesn't necessarily mean volume because some drivers are much more efficient than other drivers, right? Um, let's pretend that these are two materials that subwoofers are made out of, which technically it is. You've got cardboard paper on one, and you've got like a plastic type material on the other. Now, which one of these is heavier than the other? You can tell I clearly came ready with the visuals. Well, the plastic's a lot heavier, which means it takes a lot more power, usually to move a plastic cone, than it is to move a paper cone, which is why you don't see plastic cones usually in or polypurine um, in the pro audio industry like that, more of a car audio thing. But every driver has a different sensitivity rating and efficiency, or efficiency rating really. You wanna look for measured output. If it even says calculate it, throw it away. Don't even look at that speaker. You wanna look at measured output. Now this is very important. And it's basically telling you how loud is this speaker? Now, where was it measured at? That's a whole different story. It could have been from a foot away, could have been from three, 15 feet away. 
Uh, and that's something you can ask the manufacturer. Hopefully they'll be able to tell you that. Uh, but for the most part, you want to look at that measured output because one speaker could be a thousand watts and the other one could be 500, but the 500 one is a measured output. Why? Because that thousand watts could be peak or they could be lying to you. Kind of sort of big asterisk. We'll go back to that in just a second. So going back to the calculator part, you also want to make sure that it's averaged out, meaning that it's a long range, that it's not peak. And you know, it's kind of hard because in reality, if I'm talking to you in this volume and all of a sudden I scream at you, well, your speakers are going to be louder. So in reality, what's the real measurement of your speakers? But for the most part, measured output is not done with a soundtrack or anything like that. It's done with pink noise. That's a nice steady sine wave, steady sine wave. That's an oxymoron. My point being is that it's measured output you want to look for. Now, going back to the wattage, did I say that some major manufacturers lie? Yeah, yeah. Um, they actually deceive you, which in my opinion is the same thing as lying. Let me break it down to you, right? Let's pretend we got a speaker here. Again, I'm really not prepared with the visuals. You've got your woofer, that's your mids, your lower notes, and you've got your highs, your compression horn, your tweet or whatever you want to call it, depends on the technology it uses. Now let's say it's a thousand watts. Okay, where? So some manufacturers, when they sent out the first speaker, it was 500 to the woofer and 500 to the highs. Now let me tell you why that's a load of absolute crap. Because when you're talking about what's using what wattage, I can guarantee you those highs are never gonna use 500 watts. If you don't believe me, go look, uh, you're gonna have to find a machine, uh, basically a, a dyno, a sound dyno machine, amp dyno machine. Um, go put a pair of tweeters on an amp dyno and feed it 500 watts. It's gonna pierce your ears. Blood is going to come out. No, they don't see that much wattage in comparison to the woofer. So in reality, yeah, it's a thousand watts, but your woofer is getting what, 500? Okay. Your highs are supposedly seeing 500, but they're never going to see that high. So it's a really unfair comparison. And that's why you want to look at when it's saying a thousand, okay, where? 500 watts, where? After a while, it just gets really confusing. So you might as well look at your measured output. The next thing is sound quality. How do you gauge sound quality? Well, it's kind of hard going to a lot of stores because some of these big box stores are ran by people that couldn't even operate a potato if their life depended on it and you don't know how they tweak that speaker. So find a store that you trust, bring your own device and bring a small board. Don't just plug your phone straight into it. I mean, you can, I might give you an idea. Um, I usually bring like my little Yamaha AG06 because I can just run it off a battery and I'm good to go and I can just plug it in and I've got an idea of what the speaker is going to sound like. Um, if it's a demo and they're yeah, well, you know, we, we sat here and EQ'd it for hours on end and we got it to sound great. <laughs> Hold up. I don't want something that's gonna have to EQ for hours on end. This was a fixed install, sure, but I'm getting in, getting out, I don't have time to do all that. I wanna hear what the speaker sounds like flat. Flat means EQ, <whistles> flat all across the board. Um, so it's really hard to kind of gauge that at some of the big box stores. So say if you're able to plug in, you know, then of course, some of you guys watch YouTube videos. Yay, thank you very much. Uh, you'll notice my speaker reviews. I never actually play the music. Oh, so you can hear what it sounds like. I might play it to give you my first impressions of it or to kind of give you some anecdotals, anecdotes on what I think. But if you're actually buying a speaker based on what you heard on a YouTube video, I don't mean the reviewer. I'm talking what you physically heard coming out of the speaker. You are that potato I was just talking about because it really depends on the microphone you use. Now it's not up to how the speaker sounds based on how the microphone and your speaker sound. Think about that. And you would think that would be common sense, but I can't tell you how many DJs I've heard. Well, you know, it really sounded good on that YouTube video. Bruh, bruh. So don't do that. That's just silliness. And honestly, any reviewer that literally plays music and tells you to hear the difference, no, just throw it away. Now there's a difference. If they tell you, because there's a couple of reviewers out there that will play something like, oh, you can hear this, you can hear that again, that's antidotes. Or they may say, hey, can you hear that crackling or something? That's a little different. But if they say, here's what speaker A sounds like, and here's what speaker B sounds like, well, 
Here's what speaker you're a dumbass sounds like. Don't do that. It's blunt, but I told you, this is how the rest of the channel is going to be here on out. It's just honest, blunt advice. So going back, you don't have a lot of money or you're getting started or, hey, COVID kicked in the ass and you really got to figure out how to get new speakers and all that. All right, well, buy from somebody you trust as far as buy used if you can. Buy from somebody you trust. Otherwise, uh, obviously, you look at new and there's a lot of great dealers out there. I've used quite a few of them. I recommended some of them. I'm not going to talk video, uh, dealers in this video, but I will talk product. So at the very, very bottom of the most affordable and decent sounding speaker, believe it or not, is the American Audio CPX. And just like everything else, they discontinued that. Look, that one's not on me. And some of you may be surprised at that, but here's the thing. It was a small, not very powerful speaker, but it would be fine for little backyard parties, you know, events of like maybe 75 people or less. For the money, it was a good sounding speaker. It was also tough as hell too. This thing was roadworthy. I actually had one that dropped it off the stage. We used it as stage monitors and it still worked. But honestly, it was very happy. It's only the CPX, not the ELS, none of the other stuff. It was that CPX. They just had a really nice speaker there. Now going up from there, these are speakers that I own and that I've used. Going up from there is the Yamaha DBR10 and DBR15 series. Now I've done reviews on these. You know I'm a huge fan of Yamaha. Holy freaking crap. You're really not going to tell the difference between the DBR and their higher end series right off the bat as far as audio until you really, really crank it up because some of them get obviously louder than the others. But in terms of quality, you will. The DBR speaker is built with a much thinner plastic. It's not garbage. It's not going to break on you. But I can tell you, if you drop that down the stairs, the driver is going to come loose. So don't drop it down the stairs. But you're not giving up sound quality. Full mixer in the background, great, great sounding speaker. Um, honestly, the best sounding speaker for the money, hands down. I'll just tell you that right now. I've heard a lot of them. Nothing's going to beat the DVR series. However, that thinner plastic comes to an advantage. And this was from not just getting a chance to know the fine folks at Yamaha, but actually getting a chance to talk to the people that helped engineer this. And this was an accidental blessing for them, a happy accident, hey, Bob Ross. And that is that because that's that plastic is a lot thinner, not brittle thin, but it's thinner than your DXR, or obviously not wood like your DSR series, it seems to resonate a little bit more with the bass. So I've noticed that the DBR speakers have a lot more bass than the DXR. It just sounds really, really nice coming out. Um, I will tell you that the 10 inch version has an insane amount of bass for a 10 inch speaker uh, to the point that I've had some events where they asked me to turn the bass down and I don't even have the subs turned on yet. Again, a lot of great sound. The same thing goes for the DBR15. That is your lowest of the speakers that I recommend, but it's going to last you a long time and they do get loud. Going up that ladder is, we've got two side by side. That's your Yamaha DXR, whether that's your 10, 12, or 15. I recommend skipping to 12. Either get the 10 for the portability or because you're going to pair it with subs or get the DXR for a loudspeaker that will work for private events such as weddings, corporate, and even smaller school dances. I have done dances of three, 400 people with a pair of the 15s and boy, they kick. You got to pair those with a sub though, obviously, when you're doing that many people. But incredible sound, great output. They really kick. Now, these speakers sound flat right out of the box, which is what I personally want because I want to be able to EQ it the way I want it to. I do not want the manufacturer to tell me what they think the speaker should sound like. So I do like the flat. Also, remember that the DXR series is also engineered by the great people that also do Nexo. So there's a lot of hand-in-hand -hand that they do over there. So you are getting that really high-end Nexo quality with the Yamaha name behind it. It's just a great speaker. You'll love the DXRs. The DXR10 is my wedding go-to, and it's been that way for, well, since they actually came out. I saw my bows i sold my hks and i went for the yamaha uh, dxrs and the dsr series because i fell in love with these speakers i know you will too but on a different manufacturer level you've got the ev ekx which is a much more affordable series to their big boy the etx series again these two speakers side by side it really depends on the sound quality that you prefer i'm not saying one sounds better than the other i'm saying they sound different um again the DXRs are a lot flatter, which I prefer. The EKXs, just like the ETXs, are a little brighter. And some of you guys will like that brightness. Uh, 
the nice thing with the EKX is that you can definitely fine tune it a little bit more if you wanted to do that. The Room AQ is killer. Uh, their DSP is definitely better than Yamaha's. Yamaha doesn't have a DSP that you can tune. It's just got a preset one. Fantastic one. I ain't gonna lie. There's no reason to tune the Yamaha. But with the EKX and the ETX, it is really nice to have that option where you can do your delays. You can set your frequencies a little bit easier in some ways than the Yamaha as far as, you know, being able to really fine tune it. Yamaha, though, is just in the back. You can quickly change it. Again, both speakers are great. Notice I did not say QSC. I'm not impressed with QSC. I don't get it. I don't get why every DJ is obsessed with them because against Yamaha and EV, I'm sorry, the QSC just simply does not stand a chance, whether that's their K or KW. And I say this as a fan of the HPR series that QSC had, what, 10 years ago. I'm not impressed with the Ks. The Ks are... And the KWs, they're okay. But for the money, I think there's better out there. I just mentioned those two. Going up that ladder now, we're looking at the Yamaha DSR. Now, again, I'm, I'm a big fan of the DSR 15, 115, technically is the model number. And I'm such a big fan of those that I have. I don't know. I lost track after 10 pairs in the warehouse. These speakers are just phenomenally built. Like the sound, the size, oh my goodness. I used to have just tons of the Yorkville EF500s, the U15s. We were all Yorkville product. Then we heard the Yamaha and up to the garbage Yorkville went for multiple reasons. Notice I won't say Yorkville either. I will never endorse Yorkville. They screwed me over. They screwed a lot of people over. They screwed dealers over. That's what I've heard. But on this reviewer's opinion, do not go with Yorkville. So going back. Yamaha DSR-115 is my absolute favorite speaker of choice, but when I want that extra flexibility, boom, the ETX, like I mentioned, is another great contender. Are these affordable? <laughs> Not if you're looking for cheap speakers, but if you're wanting big sound, lower budget, yeah, these two are definitely it. I've been able to do events that people have had to bring out massive stacks for, and I've only had to do it, you know, between two to six speakers, depending on the type of event. Uh, we did a cheerleading competition, had about, I think, 2,200 people total. And we did it with three Yamaha DSR 115s, actually two there, and then two further down in the gym, slightly delayed. I'm telling you, the sound coverage was insane. It was way better than I thought it should have been. Not just the volume, not just the clarity, but it was phenomenal. On the flip side, I've done graduations outdoors with the Yamaha ETX series, and I chose to eat after a combination of the ETX with the DXRs. Uh, the DXRs have the rainproof covers, which is awesome, but the ETXs have the delays, which means I did not need to bring a really expensive audio board just for a simple event. I could do the delays built into the ETXs. So you gotta figure out what options you're gonna want. If you don't really wanna mess with delays and all, you want simple plug and play a great sound, Yamaha, if you want plug and play with the extra flexibility, you have the ETXs, but I definitely recommend the EVs, but I definitely recommend finding a way to listen to those um, because it really is a, preference. I will tell you that the Yamahas do hit a little bit lower and deeper on the bass than the EVs do by far. Uh, but again, that's just what I've noticed, but I don't really worry about that too much because I don't use those speakers on standalone. I always use them with a subwoofer. True story though on the Yamahas, because I got the Yamahas before the EV ETXs because they came out first. Um, we actually ran them at full mode. I didn't tell my staff about it and they thought that we were running the subs. They're like, man, subs are sounding really clean today. That's because I'm not running the subs, I'm running just the tops. And that's when we were pretty much all convinced, hey, we need to get the uh, Yamahas. But again, EVs, and I've got a lot of people that have EV on their rider because they love them. They're a great speaker as well. Again, two different options. You've got two different choices. Going up the ladder, there's a lot of great other speakers from Yamaha, EV, a bunch of other different manufacturers, obviously that I'm not really gonna mention because, well, we're talking about affordable right now, and honestly, if you wanna hear some uh, bigger speakers, I can do a video on that. Now, are there other brands? Yeah, if you want something that's not affordable at all, I think the system's like 5,000 bucks, and I wouldn't do more than 150 people with it, are the KS, the Satellite One speakers. Now, you may have seen me do this in different events and all that, super small, incredible sound. I mean, sound that you're never gonna expect from little speakers like that, they will literally fit in the front seat of a freaking Kia Soul or a Fiat, honestly. They're really, really compact, including the sub. There is nothing more compact than this incredible sound. I still prefer the Yamahas uh, on the 10-inch side a little bit more, but this is the most powerful subcompact system. And I mean powerful not just in terms of volume, but in terms of sound quality that you'll ever hear. 
then you're looking also for portability. You know, do you want something super portable? Well, you know, my DXR tens of the subs can take up a little bit of room. But then you have the EV Evolve series, which is portable. Does they have the same sound quality as an actual full-fledged EV system or another comparable brand? No, because they're smaller drivers. But will your crowd tell the difference? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on how picky your crowd is and if they're a room full of DJs. But people have used the Evolves. I've heard the Evolves. They sound great. You also have the Yamaha, the new Stage Pass system, which is similar to the Column Array. A lot of features in that one, too. I heard that one at NAM, actually, the last name before COVID, and the sound freaking knocked me off my feet. You know, then you have HK Audio. I actually left the Bose for HK Audio, but the HK Audio didn't have that coverage that Bose has. So, in reality, here's what you need to do you need to write down what, what you're wanting. Forget price, okay? Forget the whole, oh, it needs to be cheap. No, because it's gonna cost you in the long run. Write down what your priorities are. It's a sound quality, volume, or portability. Okay, so we've got your first one. What is your second priority? Great, your third one doesn't freaking matter because you only get two out of the three. It's almost like if you say you want something that's cheap, loud, and good. Nope, you only get two out of those three. Now, I'm not saying you can't find something that sounds good, that is loud, and is portable, but portable and loud don't necessarily go hand in hand. And there's also perception, and I'll do a video marketing perception of your sound system later on, but that's for another video. Now, once you have that, then you need to figure out, okay, what brands do I wanna stick with that I've already heard? And start finding if you see something that you trust. I I'm gonna tell you right now, I wouldn't trust your dealer because your dealer is there to make money. I'm not saying your dealer is gonna lie to you, but before anything else, you need to trust your own ears and that's it. If you cannot hear the sound, that's why you go to conventions. And right now with COVID, I get it. That's really difficult. So I wish I could offer you some advice there, but it really is one of those that either you find somebody you trust that you want to take their opinion on, or you find a brand that you've already heard that you know you like. You know, in my case, I've heard Yamaha, half EV, or I've heard EV. I trust those two brands. Why would I go to something different? Could it sound better? Possibly, but I'm not about to take that gamble when I've got two brains that I already know what to expect from them. Now, remember what you're looking for is you're not looking for wattage. Wattage does not matter. It never will matter because you really shouldn't have to worry about tripping breakers anyways, because if you are, well, you're in the wrong field. Just being honest with you. For the most part, two speakers and the sub are not going to trip most breakers for most DJ events. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But Stop worrying about wattage. Stop worrying about, oh, you know, this has 1,100 watts. No, and stop advertising that way too because that's just, that just makes you sound amateurish. Look at your output. What is it rated at? Is it rated at 126 decibels? Holy crap, okay, 132, 136. Now we're getting somewhere. 1,100 watts, it doesn't mean anything, especially when you put a kilowatt to it and you realize the same pulling or even producing 1100 watts and we'll do a video on that later on why because it's not the way most of you DJs would expect they'll see they already understand how audio works or like well duh so yeah hopefully that helps out if you guys want to see more videos let me know if I talk too fast let me know and I'll probably tell you too bad so sad but thanks so much for watching have a good night God bless and I'll see you soon Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Gear it first, honest reviews, incredible gig logs, lots of tips and tricks, and more tutorials than any other YouTube channel. I guarantee it or your money back.